Welcome to this recording of the webinar topic, Essay Structure Bootcamp. You can watch this video straight through, or you can use the pause button to give yourself time to do the activities. These webinar slides are available at the Learning Support website. There is a link to the slides on the YouTube page, just below the upload date. Or you can type this link into your web browser to find the slides. Our goals today are to understand how to put an essay together and what specifically to put into an essay introduction, body and conclusion. You'll also do other types of assignments in your course, such as case studies or reports. The information in this webinar is useful for all assignments in terms of organising information clearly. However, check the specific requirements of other assignments, as they do differ in some ways to essays. For more information on the different assignment types and their requirements, go to learningsupport.acap.edu.au, then choose Assessment Writing and then Assignment Types. Before we start, take a moment to think about what you know about essay structure already. This is helpful so you can compare ACAP essays to your previous experience. There may be some differences. If you don't know anything about essays, don't panic. You're not the first person to start from scratch. There are lots of resources to help you develop your skills. This webinar, the Learning Support website, Learning Support staff and teachers to name a few. An essay follows a basic structure that I've hinted at already. An introduction, which tells the reader what you're going to say. A body, which gives the details and supporting information. And the conclusion, which reminds the reader of what you said in your essay and your main point. Today we're going to look at a simplified model essay as a way of seeing this underlying structure. Just a note, it's common for different websites and books to suggest slightly different ways of structuring an essay. There is no exact right or wrong way. This webinar gives you a solid yet simple foundation that you can adapt and build on as you develop your skills as an essay writer. Here's something to get you thinking. In the essay structure we're looking at today, there are three parts of an introduction. What do you think they are? You could also think of this as three purposes that the introduction fulfills. Pause the recording if you want to think about this for a minute. Here are the suggested parts of an introduction and their order. Firstly, we want to start with the topic and its context. What is the essay about generally and why are we writing about this topic? Why is this necessary? A few reasons. Explaining the general topic before getting to specifics allows the reader to get a handle on what they're going to be reading. Think of it as preparing your reader's brain to successfully receive the more detailed information that will come later. This part of the introduction can also grab the reader's interest and encourage them to keep reading by starting with more general information that they can relate to. Secondly, we want to give the reader a map or a signpost of the information that will be covered in the body of the essay. Again, think of this as a way of preparing your reader's brain for what is to come later in the essay. If your reader knows that they will be reading about A, B and C in that order, they will be expecting that and the information in A, B and C will make more sense to them. This is the way our brains work. So this signposting part of the introduction outlines the different sections of the body of the essay. The third part of the introduction sometimes surprises people. At the end of the introduction, you tell the reader your answer. You don't wait until the conclusion of the essay. By answer, I mean your answer to the essay question, which can also be called your thesis statement, your main point, or your main conclusion. So, why do you tell your reader the answer in the beginning? Why don't you make them read all the body of the essay and find out the answer at the end? That's a good question. A simple answer is that this is the accepted Western academic style of presenting an argument or position. Tell the reader the answer, support that answer with details, and then tell the reader the answer again, so there's no way they'll forget. Other styles of writing and other academic traditions take different approaches, but for the writing you do at university in Australia, you almost always use this approach. It's called deductive reasoning. Now let's look at the essay question for our model essay. It's really important to understand the question so we can analyse the essay. This question asks about rising divorce rates. More specifically, we're asked to look at explanations for the rise in divorce, which might be changes to divorce laws or religious changes, for example. Now, what are we expected to do with this topic? We need to critically analyse explanations for rising divorce. 
This means examine some explanations and also present a position on which is the best one. OK, now that we understand the essay question, let's look at the essay introduction. At the top of this slide, we can see the three parts of an introduction we talked about before. Then there is a model introduction. This is an activity you can do yourself. Read the introduction. Can you find where the context or the topic starts and finishes? Where the signposting is? Where the thesis statement is? Pause the video now if you want to do this activity. OK, let's look at the three parts of the introduction together. The first sentence is repeating some of the information from the question. It's giving the general topic of rising divorce rates. Then the second sentence is also explaining about divorce rates rising, so let's put both of these into the blue context or topic setting part. The third sentence actually tells us the question, and this is also part of setting the topic. Now we move to the map or signpost. This sentence here tells the reader that they will find out about two possible explanations, changes in laws and socioeconomic changes. Now the reader's mind is preparing itself to find out about these two explanations in the body of the essay. The final sentence in the introduction is the thesis statement, which is the main answer or conclusion. In this case, the writer has decided that social and economic changes are the best explanation for rising divorce rates. You can see that there's no mystery about the answer. It is clearly stated at the end of the introduction. After the introduction, we move to the body of the essay. This is where you provide more detail on each of the points that support your thesis statement. The body is made up of a number of paragraphs called body paragraphs. In the case of our model essay, there are two body paragraphs. This is a short essay and you'll usually have more body paragraphs in your assignments. You can see that the topics of the body paragraphs match what was in the signpost in the introduction. A good way to organise your thoughts and information before you start writing is to write a series of headings like this. It is a lot easier to write small sections of text under headings than one big essay. Academic and reflective essays don't have headings in the final version, however, so before you submit your essay, you need to change the headings into topic sentences. We'll look at that next. Here is an activity about the structure of body paragraphs. Think about which order these parts should go in and why. Press pause to give yourself time to do this activity. Here is the correct structure for our body paragraphs. Topic sentence, which acts like a heading because it tells the reader what the paragraph is about. Then some supporting sentences that do the actual work of explaining and giving evidence and examples. A body paragraph often ends with a concluding sentence that sums up the main idea of the paragraph again and may tell the reader what the next paragraph will be about. OK, here's another activity for you. Here you are looking for the topic sentence, the supporting sentences, and there are a number of these, and the concluding and linking sentence. Press pause to try this one out. How did you go? The topic sentence is the first sentence in a body paragraph. Here it tells us the paragraph is going to talk about changes in laws relating to marriage. Can you see how it's a bit like a heading? Another important job of the topic sentence is to link back to the essay question and the thesis statement. Here it is stated clearly that we are talking about an explanation for increasing divorce. This reminds the reader of our main topic and prevents them feeling lost. Next in the body paragraph, we have information that explains and gives details and evidence about changes to divorce laws. I'll highlight up to here for the supporting sentences. Now, the concluding sentence. This is the last sentence here. This sentence sums up the writer's view of this explanation, that it is not in itself the best explanation. This sentence also points to the next body paragraph, which we can see will be about more fundamental socioeconomic changes. But that leaves us with one sentence not highlighted. This is the writer's own analysis of changes to laws as an explanation for rising divorce. I would put this as part of the supporting sentences. However, if it makes more sense to you to put it as part of the concluding section of the paragraph, that's OK too. Here is the second body paragraph for this essay. Try the same activity with this one. Identify the topic sentence, supporting sentences and concluding sentence. Pause the video to do the activity. 
Again, for this body paragraph, we start with the topic sentence, follow with a series of supporting sentences, and end with a concluding sentence. Now we're getting towards the end of our essay, the conclusion. In our model essay, the conclusion does three things. It brings the reader back to the essay question, it gives a summary of the main content points of the essay, and it tells the reader again the answer to the essay question. Have a go at finding the three parts of the conclusion in this model. Pause the video if you want time to do this activity. Okay, so the first sentence here refers to the essay question. Then there is a sentence about the first explanation that was discussed in the essay, legal changes. Next, there is a sentence summarising the argument that legal changes are not sufficient explanation and that socio-economic changes have caused increased divorce. The final sentence again reiterates the essay answer or the thesis statement. You might think that there's a lot of repetition in this essay and you'd be right. However, an essay is usually a long document and repetition is a key to keeping your reader on track so they can follow your argument. I hope this video has given you some ideas for your next essay. This slide shows you some more essay writing resources that you might find useful. Use this address to get the slides and links from this webinar. Get in touch with us at Learning Support if you have any queries or need specific advice about an assignment you're writing. Good luck with your studies.